Hello, my name is John Nordberg. This is the third of five short parts to the science film that covers truly life-changing physics. If you have started at a point other than video clip one, then please stop, find video clip number one, and start at the beginning. I highly recommend that you view all of the video clips for this film in order. In earlier parts of this film, I explained time and demonstrated a critical experiment. An experiment that demonstrates something fundamental to physics. In my opinion, understanding time is a key that allows the grand unification of physics. The experiment simply demonstrates that this new physics goes beyond theory. I recommend you understand that earlier information before you go on to this part of the film. In this part of the film, I'll explain how physics can be unified. Some people refer to this aspect of physics as grand unification. The title, Grand Unification Theory, or the acronym GUT, G-U-T, is often used. Some people refer to this aspect of physics using the title Theory of Everything, or with the acronym TOE. Personally, I think this description goes a little too far. It is a little too grandiose. All a grand unification theory really unifies is the physics that you would find in a college level physics course. Of course, this does not cover everything. It does not cover the concept of life. It does not cover the concept of your soul or whatever word you'd like to use that would describe what makes you uniquely you. This physics does not address many of the mysteries of life. This does not unify religion or God. However, I believe these are areas that physics can now start to really look into. I hope you enjoy this physics. Personally, I find this new physics all really extremely interesting. Have you ever felt the awe of an immense mystery for example, have you ever pondered the miracle of your very existence? It's almost unbelievable the number of things the human body must be able to do automatically just to stay alive, just to reproduce, or just to give birth. Most people are blinded by the everyday details of their life. They go through life just trying to get tasks done. It can be difficult to have the time just to ponder an immense mystery, much less the time to try and explain one. This leaves them feeling empty. So keep that in mind. What we are doing right now is taking some time away from the everyday details of our lives to ponder and understand one of life's immense mysteries. I trust it will leave you feeling satisfied. Few people really understand their core purpose in life. I understand my purpose, it is obvious, is understanding and explaining this physics. People that understand why they are living, what their core purpose is, tend to feel content. People that do not have this understanding tend to experience angst. They are not harmonic. We think of the concepts of content and angst as emotions. Personally, I think of these emotional concepts as extensions of physics. They are like the physical concepts of harmonic and non-harmonic. In my opinion, this new physics addresses harmonic versus non-harmonic. Partly, this is philosophical. In other words, in my opinion, there's real physics to understanding why angst is bad and why living a non-harmonic life is destructive. In my opinion, this grand unification physics explains why harmonic is good. Most religions preach love and harmony. In my opinion, there's a real underlying physics that supports this. Let me finish this short introduction with this. In my opinion, this physics really is something that you should truly understand before you die. So I ask you, 
please join me. Let us take a moment from a life that has become all too superficial and consider something in life that is truly significant. Prior scientists deserve credit here. Earlier, I mentioned that other scientists almost made it to the center of the physics labyrinth about 100 years ago. Who were they? The first physicist I must give credit to was John Henry Poynting. He was a very important physicist. He almost unified physics about 100 years ago. He was English. He lived from 1852 to 1914. John Henry Poynting is almost famous for an equation named after him, a very important equation. Back then, many physicists were working on an idea referred to as electromagnetic mass. There are probably many others that deserve recognition for their work on electromagnetic mass, but I feel one physicist in particular that deserves mention is Oliver Heaviside. He was also English. Oliver Heaviside lived from 1850 to 1925. Anyhow, Heaviside was one of the big proponents of an idea called electromagnetic mass. Unfortunately, he was never able to complete a theory on this. In my opinion, the work of these two physicists could have unified physics. It is too bad they didn't understand time. No matter how you look at it, these physicists deserve much more credit than they have received. In a way, what I'm about to do is jump to the last page of a good book and explain how the story ends. For that, I apologize. John Pointing developed an equation now called the Pointing Vector. The vector E cross the vector B equals mu naught times the vector S. The E stands for the electric field vector. The X stands for the cross product. The B stands for the magnetic field vector. Mu naught is a constant. The vector S is called the pointing vector. When most people study physics, this equation appears to be just another equation. It does not seem very significant. In my opinion, this equation should be considered the central equation of physics. In my opinion, Everyone should be able to rattle this equation off, just like most people can rattle off E equals mc squared. Unfortunately, the real importance of the pointing vector has been overlooked by physicists, by everyone. It's a shame, because this is an equation that pointing could have used to unify physics. Pointing should have received a Nobel Prize in physics for his work in this area. Right now, our goal is to understand the grand unification of physics. As such, this next topic is very important. It is critical. We are going to examine the basic units of the pointing vector. I understand this is a little analytical, but please stick with me on this. Typically, scientists refer to the units of the pointing vector as watts per meter squared. This is what other scientists prefer. It is not what I prefer. With respect to the pointing vector, I don't like to think in terms of watts because a watt is a derived concept. In this situation, it's far more illuminating to just use basic units instead. The basic units for a watt are as I just said, scientists usually use watts Per meter squared. So let us multiply this term by a per meter squared term. Here, the two meter squared terms cancel each other. Thus, in basic units, watts per meter squared reduces to this. 
I realize everyone will not immediately understand why, but this is exciting. The pointing vector in basic units is kilograms divided by cubic seconds. This is a much better way to remember the units of the pointing vector. It is very revealing. When physicists talk about unifying physics, they go on and on about combining forces. They talk about combining gravity with electromagnetic forces. Specifically, for over 100 years, physicists have wanted to be able to describe gravity in terms of electromagnetics. That is why seeing the units kilograms here is extremely important. This overlooked equation already unifies physics. In other words, the pointing vector includes both the concepts of electromagnetics on the left side and mass on the right side. This equation unifies physics. By itself, this is not a grand unification theory. It is only a unifying equation. This is just an equation that links two areas of physics. It links the concepts of electromagnetics to the concepts of mass and gravity. By the way, in case you are wondering, this equation has been tested for over 100 years. There's no doubt about it. The equation really does describe a physical reality. It does describe nature. In fact, it describes the very essence of nature. You might ask, at least we, we should ask, what is the physical significance of kilograms per cubic second? What is a cubic second? This is one reason why understanding time is so important. This is one reason why you really must watch all the video clips for this science film in order. Remember, one second is physically equal to a distance of 299,792,458 meters. Because in my new type of physics, a unit of time is physically equal to a unit of length, seconds can be treated as meters. And thus, a cube of time is physically equal to a volume of space. Thus, kilograms per cubic second can instead be thought of as density. Most people will not feel a chill or go up their spine over this. However, if you truly understand physics, then this should be one of those spine-tingling moments. This should not be some logical cognitive moment. This should be an emotional one, a moment with a touch of awe.